Grade 8 Math, number 8.3b, Elimination Method by Adding Graph to Check. The elimination method is another method used to solve a system of linear equations. In the last unit, we used substitution, didn't we? So in elimination, one variable is eliminated by adding or subtracting the two equations of the system to get a single equation in one variable. We write the equations so that they're stacked vertically with the terms lined up nice and neat and we add or subtract to eliminate either the x or y variable, and we simplify and solve for the variable that wasn't eliminated. Then we substitute that value into either of the original equations to solve for the other variable. We turn two equations with two variables into one equation with one variable. Isn't that something? And we can check it by graphing. So we can check our answer, our solution, by graphing. Just make sure that the equations are rewritten in slope-intercept form so they're easier to graph and you want to make sure that they're written in standard form when we are adding them and stacking them. See, when we're done doing that and we know what x and y equals, then we want to put it in slope-intercept form so we can have an easier time graphing them. Now, what's amazing about learning how to do this is it's actually better to substitute the x and y values that you find into the equations to check to see if they're correct. But we need to know how to do it with a graph and by doing it graphing, so I'm going to show you, but keep in mind, it's usually better to substitute the x and y values into the original equations to check it, okay? So remember, if they're not written in standard form, rewrite them to make it easier on yourself. Sometimes the equations won't line up because one is written in one way and another one's written in another way. Make sure they're written in the same form, okay? So these two are this system of equations is written in the same form, in the standard form. So we've neatly stacked them so the terms line up. We've got our x terms here, our y terms, and we got our constants lined up. Make sure that the ones are in the ones place and the tens are in the tens place. You would hate to accidentally add the 8 to this 110 and get 96 by mistake, right? So make sure they're lined up nice. So we've got a positive 2x and we're going to add a negative 2x and that's going to create a zero pair, isn't it? Right off the bat, we know that. And we have a y and 3y, that's going to give us 4y. Because remember, there's our friend the invisible 1 there, so it's 4y. And 16 and 8 is a 24, so we've got 4y equals 24. Well, now we can divide to isolate y. So we divide both sides by 4, because that's what will get the y by itself. We get our friend the invisible 1, we have y equals 6, because 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we've solved for y now. We can plug 6 into an original equation as the y. So I choose the top one, 2x plus y equals 8. So now it's going to be 2x plus 6 equals 8, because we substituted it in, see? So we can now subtract 6 from each side. I'm going to isolate the variable. 8 take away 6 is 2. We have 2x equals 2. We divide both sides by 2. We get our buddy, the invisible 1 again. We have x equals 1, because 2 over 2 is 1, right? So our solution is 1 for x and 6 for y. As an ordered pair, it's a 1 comma 6, okay? Now what we need to do is take these equations, if we can still read them through my scribbling, and rewrite them into slope-intercept form so they're going to be easier to graph, okay? So here's the first one. We have 2x plus y equals 8, and we're going to subtract 2x from each side to get this y up in front by itself where it belongs, okay? So we've eliminated him. Now we've got y equals negative 2x plus 8. Now the reason I got a plus sign here is because I wanted to show you something. Some people might accidentally put 8 minus 2x. And that wouldn't be in slope-intercept form. We want to get this 2 and this x, which is the slope and the x value, right next to that equal sign. So we're just going to do it right now. If we don't, if we put the 8 here minus 2x, we have to rewrite it anyway. So just put the negative 2x here first, and that's a plus 8, so it goes back there. So we've got our first equation in slope-intercept form. Now let's do the second one. We've got negative 2x plus 3y equals 16. We're going to add 2x to each side. So even though we're adding these together, this is going to create a zero pair, isn't it? So we've eliminated it. Now we've got 3y equals 2x plus 16, because it's a positive 16, right? So it's going to be a plus 16 back here. But we need to get that y by itself. So we need to divide each one of these terms by this 3. 
get our buddy the invisible one again so we've got y by itself this two-thirds is going to stay two-thirds as our slope x and 3 goes into 16 five times with one left over so that's 5 and 1 third for our y-intercept b okay so here we go I've rewritten them over here so I don't have to keep looking over there and because we see that this is a negative 2 for our slope we know the line is going to come down this way it's going to fall to the right isn't it because it's a negative slope and this one's got a positive two-thirds so it's going to rise to the right so we already know which way our lines are going to go and with this is a negative 2, it's a negative 2 over a 1, isn't it? That's our rise, that's our run. This is our rise, this is our run. So it's gonna, this one is going to hit the y-axis at 8, because that's our y-intercept b, okay? So if you look closely here, here's the 8. I almost got to the edge of the paper here, didn't I? So that's one point. It's hitting the y-intercept at 8 right there. And it's got a slope of a negative 2. So we got negative 2 over 1. So it's going to go down this way. So we go down 2, 1, 2, and we go over 1, and it puts us right there at that bullseye. Okay? So I had this point and this point, and I drew my line through them. Okay? That's the blue line. So now the pink line, that's why there's a pink dot. We know the y-intercept is at 5 and a third. Okay? So we find on the y-axis 5 and a third about right there it's not quite half okay and it's got a positive slope so we're going upwards of 2 over 3 our rise over a run is 2 over 3 so we're right here at 5 and a third we need to go up to so and over 3 so here's our run 1 2 3 and we need to go up to so since we're at a third we're going to be up here at a third so I put my point and then I drew my line through the 5 and a third spot on Y and that point, and I got my pink line, and look where they intersected, at 1 and 6, just like they were supposed to. So we know we did it correctly. We know it's true, all right? Now remember, some of you are already writing your answers as solution sets. When you put them inside of the set brackets, that means it's a solution set. It's the set of all solutions, okay? See, so it's inside parentheses and then inside the solution set like that, see? If you're not doing that yet, you will be soon, okay? So now you know what it looks like. So that's the elimination me method by adding and graphing it to check. Just remember that it's actually better to substitute the x and y values, that 1 and that 6, into the equation to check to see if it's right. It's much better, okay? We're going to go on to 8.3c, and we're going to talk about elimination by subtracting, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.